I, honest to goodness, that was such a transformational experience. I have felt, I felt a shift and just like you said, like it has become deeper, stronger over the last few weeks since we met. I was actually going to ask you if, if there were elements of hypnotherapy involved because I just, it was such a profound change. I think what you'll come to understand is through your healing work as well, is that when you're working with presence, when you ask questions and you know how to artfully ask questions, you actually put somebody into a regression instantaneously. So I'm going to have you experience it just through an exercise real quick. So I want you to just um, look at my hand. You can see my aura ring. Kind of just look at all the facets of the different bones. And then as you look at my hand, I want you to just focus. Now, when I take my hand, I want you to just relax your eyes. And then I want you to go ahead and just, as I close my hand down, go and think about the street you grew up on when you were a kid. So as I close my hand, go ahead and just say the name of the street that you grew up on. Bella Vista. Yeah. Go ahead and look at my hand. Huh? I'll look at my hand. And while looking at my hand, try to focus on my hand. Remember, what was the color of your first bike? It was white and pink. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and just look at my hand again. I want you to go ahead and as you're a child, I'm going to have you go ahead and just say your home phone number when you were a kid. I'm going to take my hand down and just go ahead and find your phone number and say it out loud. Pass. I've had a time when I was a kid. Okay, go ahead and look at my hand. Look at my hand. Me too. Five. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, like, so here. So look at my hand. Huh? You feel present? Forget about everything I just said. Just look at my hand. Yes. Breath, just, yeah, just present. Just look at all the fine details. You're back up in the front of your brain. So what that is an example of how we go back to retrieve information. So when you close your eyes, the proprioceptive ability to try to remember is what you did is you closed your eyes and you went back into the anatomical brain, which is the field, and you tried to bring the message forward. Ah, uh -huh. so What happens is when we go into an instant regression, into an instant hypnotic state, so depending on what you ask, it could be good, it could be positive. I could say, okay, look at my hand, look at my hand. Mm -hmm. like you have no mm -hmm. name, no phone number, nothing at all. You're just clear, calm. Now I want you to go back and I want you to go all the way back and I want you to think of a happy moment that you had today. Go back and try to find the happy moment. Mm -hmm. take, my hand, take my hand down. It might become even easier. What was that happy moment? My friend got a promotion this morning. Awesome. Go ahead and look at my hand. Celebrating. Uh -huh. Now I want you to go back to yesterday morning and just try to find and start to feel your brain go back and retract a happy moment just yesterday morning. So do you start to feel the energy of your brain starting to move in the different compartments? Yeah. That's hypnosis. Yes. Yes. Wow. We don't notice we're doing it, but when we understand the art of questioning and the art of regression, we can formulate a conversation or a healing session oh, without girl. any scripts, but just to help somebody regress back and find what they need to find. That is brilliant. Science is not my forte. I'm fascinated by this. I just, this whole experience has been, I don't have words. I have immense gratitude. I was just amazing. It's fun. So with that said, we know last session was a huge opening for you, just this beautiful fountain of energy moving. I would love to hear from you what's on your heart, just opening up with what do you want to know and what do you want to let go for tonight? There's two things buzzing. One was how can I connect and get to know my ancestors and if that's even appropriate to do right now? And the other possible is, 
know I'm being called to do something, but what the business is. So if I hear you correctly, there's a connection that was created from our last session that created an emotional connection to the depths of your soul and also a connection that you sense ancestors around you, that there is benevolent beings that are supporting your venture. So there's like this, what I'm sensing is there's this want to get to know them better. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And some of that is by just being present with them. And one of the best ways to do that is just to call them in and ask them to create an energy of their presence so that you can start to feel and sense when you're shifting your spirit mind into that domain of where the spirit guides re live on the realm of the spirit realm around you because they have a different frequency. So the other piece, say a little bit more about the work. So the components are what emotion is showing up. The component is where can we look at on the timeline? So we have the vertical timeline, mm -hmm. which I call dynamic energy. And dynamic energy is this internal prism of light. So yeah. when we connect to prism of light, really connecting to your higher realm, to your highest self, to your over soul, to the all in what we call the I am, and just sense that connection. And as we allow that light to come in, you can go ahead and open your eyes, and we have this static linear view. So this is what we determine where is in the present time, where is the emotion, and then where is the archetype, good, bad, or indifferent, that we can explore more around that's going to be able to tell us a little bit more on how we can unlock more of this story. Where is that emotion in the body? What is my purpose? Okay. What's my purpose? And then I, the immediate, like a longing from the heart. Belonging from the heart. That's the first thing that came to mind. Okay. It's a really big question. And if you and I could come to the table on purpose, do you believe that you have one purpose? No, we have different roles and different things we fulfill. I want to regain my financial independence and contribute to the world beyond my home. And that's a beautiful intention. So thank you for sharing thank that. You. Yeah, so I thank want you. to regain financial independence. Where did it go? Left the workplace two years ago. I do believe I was guided to do it at that time. Lots of blessings in the last few years. No regrets. Yeah, like I'm contributing again. And I've come to terms that I value my financial independence. So what part of you are you not valuing? I think that's where I feel blocked. It's this part of me that isn't dreaming isn't maybe that's it what's it that there's a part of me that isn't dreaming maybe I have a pull to regain balance not and not fall into a state of depletion and burnout so I can learn how to take care of my spiritual mental and physical vessels as I raise my children so I can show up for them I may or may not be able to have the same salary or whatever that I had before. It's also about contributing to the world in a meaningful way like I did before. I felt very connected to what I did professionally. And where haven't you been contributing? Question. I do contribute. I most definitely volunteer a lot. I so do what I can and I try to do it as generously as I can. So it sounds like you're really generous. It sounds like when you step out of the home, you're in your purpose. And it sounds like you certainly treat your children with purpose. So what you just told me is that when you leave the home, you're initiating being of service to the world, which is being a purpose. So again, where isn't the purpose? 
I love that framing. An honest question. Yeah, I did that. I love it. It's a great question, but it's also a great question that pushes on your framing of things. And so it's now what I'm seeing is that it's a sense of unfulfillment. And what I've been wrestling with for some time is that, is it because of ego? What is the unfulfillment part? I just don't feel at peace being at home without a job, which then, of course, I can go down the rabbit hole of like capitalism and like worth and et cetera. Let's pause right there. So within the architecture of the soul, we have, I'm going to frame it. We have power over, power under, power with, power within. So okay. when we look at this, when we want to deepen our expansion with our spirit guides, our ancestors, and the essence of our soul, we have been born into a world that is taken from us, that makes us think we're a victim too. Power over is going to want to take the choice away. Okay, so let's, you just said, oh, capitalism and patriarchy. As a woman, for you and I, that is a very real feeling in the essence and the DNA of our soul. Okay. okay. Now, if we look at the archetype of the power over taking choice away, this is where the feminine then starts to move into not so much the wounded healer, but more in a power over because now they're trying to meet their match of the male masculine energy. So that archetype, that doesn't feel like you and my guides are saying this isn't your archetype, is the prostitute. So the prostitute archetype will sell herself to get to the top of the rung of the ladder at corporate. The prostitute archetype yeah. will do whatever it takes to feed everybody else in order to feel loved. What I heard was that the prostitute that sells themselves to get at what they want at all. At all cost okay. myself. Then you have power under and that denies choice. The power under is the church is an example. So we will go to a church. I will pray to the priest. I will go to the little box, say all my skin sins, right? Mm -hmm. And deny mm -hmm. that I have choice and sovereignty in my soul. I put myself under, okay? So power over, yes. power under. Power with is we're on a level of playing field here. You and me. Mm -hmm. This is what I set up. This is the container of a holographic session. It's power with. For you yes. to step into your power within. Now, Got it. there's up choice and there's a down choice. We always have a crossroad. You can go left or you're right. You can go up. We're going to go up. That's what we're doing tonight. Okay. So let's go back to purpose. So I want you to close your eyes. And the guides are dropping this in. And I want you to validate if it feels right and true to you. If it does not, I'm going to give you another example of a saying. How does my value for perfection create inner obstacles and misunderstandings of my own self-worth and purpose? On a scale from 1 to 10, what does that feel like? The number that comes up immediately is 3. Now, with that question... How does my value for perfection create an inner obstacle? Now, if I were to remove the word perfection, what would you put in place of that? Let your soul drop in and drop down. Your, how does my value for worth, right? So that's a habit. That's a thought because worth is a thought. It's a habit that you've thought over and over again. So you have a habit of looking outside yourself. So what's blocking you from claiming what soul's experience of your purpose? Like I'm waiting for somebody else to let me know what my place is. Just outside validation. So what within you needs releasing to incorporate this dynamic energy of this vertical presence of coming in? What in the way there of this dropping in that's putting you in the moment of feeling the unworthiness of being able to see 
the clarity of the meaning of purpose. Because purpose is a dynamic energy. It moves. It has intention. It has motion. And it has knowing. But in order to come into knowing, you have to be in the unknown, which we're moving in and out of all the time. Mercy, that's profound. So stay in the moment. Go back to your vertical clarity. There's a vertical okay. clarity issue of not understanding what purpose really in essence in its energy is for you to serve you and for you to serve it in your essence. But there's an expectation. There is a self-judgment. There is a fear. There is a limit. Number one, from a worldview, from power over power under, and your understanding mm -hmm. of your soul's experience in the now that's blossoming your purpose. Well, I, the sensation that I have is that it's not so much now as a sense of purpose, but rather in terms of identity, what's my role? And that's even a limited thing to say, what's my role? It's like this feeling of being a, without direction. Weird. It's not weird. Stay with it. Where do you sense that as an emotion? And if you had an emotion, what would the emotion be? And where do you feel it in your body? It, it felt like I was a little bit floating, but um, like very newborn. I'm in a new land and I needed to be oriented, wow. but I'm feeling it in my heart. First impression. So it feels as though the trigger emotion is, repeat that again, just whatever comes to mind. That I'm disoriented, like in a new place, a new... Okay, just stick with disoriented. Okay. So that emotion is disorientation. Now, if we go back, and we go back to the timeline, and we go back to the past, is there any familiar memory that feels like this? If there's not, say no. Nothing comes up. Okay, so here's what my guides are bringing in. Allow them to just drop into the space. So beautiful. So here's what's coming in. You're feeling disoriented. And the guides are coming through, including your ancestors. They are here and present again. Now, what I would like you to do is just feel into the essence of your heart. Going through your heart, please stay out of your mind. Mm -hmm. Just feel your heart like a beautiful blossoming opening up. And just allow the ancestors in the room and let me know when you feel their presence. They're here. What do they feel like? I felt like a hug, like a... I literally felt like this around my heart. Okay. So what is coming in is your ancestors are coming in. My guides and your guides are surrounding you in this beautiful light. And the archetype that is actually coming in is the opposite of the inner child that we spoke of last time. Because the inner child that is coming in is still the inner child, but it is the inner child seeing its beauty of its mystical self. Now, the mystical co-creation of the archetype turns into a mystical, mature, co-creative adult. Your ancestors are here tonight to initiate an initiation for you. And they're acknowledging your love for your purpose because you are interconnected with all in your vertical power. And they're saying your clarity will continue to come through and awaken when you are connected to your vertical power. Because when we're down here on the linear and the static view, we're looking for validation from habitual thinking and power over and power under structures. Because that's what you know. Yeah. 
in the primal body, meaning the primal lower three chakras. Yes. Okay. So you're entering the lower three chakras in a spaciousness that is allowing the inner child to be there, but we're also now shifting into the mystical empowerment of the mystical initiation of the deeper spiritual reality that activates the true archetype, which is the mystic. Now the shadow archetype resolves to fate. It allows the world to determine their life, their unconscious, right? Like our exercise at the start. The mystical archetype chooses its destiny. You're choosing your destiny, your guides are saying, your ancestors are saying, by opening up the spiritual realm of this session tonight, because we are in an initiation, beautiful space of no space, no time area in, in, in this presence. So how does that feel for you? It makes sense. How does it feel for you? Like I have a calm peace. Yes, that there has been a shift and this is a process of co-creation. Got off the hamster wheel two years ago and I needed to do like this deconditioning kind of thing. But now I need to take back my power and co-create and be more of a partner. And a partner with who? With the universe, because my purpose, there's something out. It's not necessarily in the, like the physical realm. This is beyond. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. So the essence that you're co-creating with Mm -hmm. is the essence of who you are. Mm. It's unlocking deeper aspects of you that haven't been opened yet. And your guides and your ancestors are here with you to acknowledge that all healing doesn't need to be painful. It can be clarifying. So you came wow. with this, I want to regain financial independence and contribute to the world beyond at home. So who are we giving our power away to in that statement? It's the social structures, societal structure. It's not anything based on that vertical And we've also determined that you are already within your purpose. And who determines our purpose other than our soul and being honest and clear with ourselves saying, was I a selfish son of a bitch today? Or did I contribute to myself in the best way that I could? We're not always on. We're not always in public. Sometimes we're in service to ourselves. Sometimes we're in service to spirit. We are in service, but service also needs replenishment. Purpose goes both ways. So if our healing art, I'm getting another download from the guides for you. When you listen to your soul's gifts and your soul's language. So let's say, I'll give you an example for me as of recent, ancient mother has come in. And so I'm spending a lot of time to push through the resistance, the frustration, the anger in my intuitive channel to say, why can't it just be more clear? Just tell me, right? So whether that's from our intuitive clarity or somebody we're channeling and coming through to come through and channel, Mm -hmm. it's part of my soul's language. So ishinokonata, oshonokotika, ikonoko. Yes, so I allow our presence to come in and just come out what comes out. But your soul language is being dialed in right now when it comes in these different verticals. So ancient mother is now here with me because now she's channeling with me to share with you is that if you open up and honor your purpose, understand that purpose honors you. I, the one, that honors my purpose is the one purpose honors. Can you say that out loud? I, the one 
who honors I the, purpose. I the one who honors purpose. Is the one. Is the one. Purpose, purpose honors. honors. You feel that co-creation with the universe. I have the sharp sensation come down my spine. Allow that energy to come in. It's all new energy upgrading the nervous system. Beautiful. Now let's step into the unconscious contract. So first and foremost, who are you giving your power away to? I'm going to give you a list of different emotions. Mm -hmm. The emotion that you gave me was disorientation. We have seven emotional circuits. I'm going to give you a list of seven. You name one of them that feels most true to you. Okay? Play. Grief. Care. Lust. Rage. Fear. And seeking. First impression. Seeking? Seeking. Great. That's exactly what the guides had shared with me as well. So you're in tune. So seeking also has this expectancy. So there's this ex expectancy of yourself to know your purpose. There's this expectancy of yourself to have tangible mula in your hands. Now this goes back down to our primal three chakras, right? The need to survive, the need to show up and to contribute, and the need to have balance. So there's a deep thread here for women. We want to feel as though we are contributing. We also want to know that we're going to be okay if we are out in the backyard by ourselves and nobody come around, save us, right? Seeking also has the positive aspect to it. It has this rich, exciting anticipation. It has this foraging and getting your hands in the dirt. It has interest. It has curiosity. So what we want to do is just revoke the vow. It's an old vow. It's been here for quite some time, actually. And we're just going to identify who the vow was given to. Now, it could be yourself. It could be the world. It could be uh, a parent. Does anything come to mind? It is what it feels like. It's feel almost like there's a cage element. Oh my God, there's a tarot card that's coming to mind. Go ahead and pull that out. It, um, give me one second. Oh, it's um, from the mystical moments and it's a bird in the cage, but the cage is opened. And what I just heard is that I'm putting myself in the cage. It's like it's just another form of self sabotaging behaviors. I saw it so clearly. I make that up. So this is the root chakra. So I want okay. you to go to your heart, you know, we've been going to the root chakra. So the seeking circuit, right? There is a disconnection. So the cage is what's dropping in from the guides is the disconnection. And you're connecting back to your root now. Right? If we don't have a firm four lotuses on the bottom of our sits bones, because the four lotuses of the root chakra, which represents the four different minds. Okay. And the four different minds of the root chakra, just feel your butt and your sits bones just sitting down. And do you feel fully supported in your root chakra? Connect back in. Good. So we're removing the disconnection from the root chakra. That's linked to the seeking energetically, mm -hmm. which can then evoke lack of motivation, lack of feeling of purpose, leads to feeling apathy and depression. That's just what the root lower primal chakra does. So we can go to the penthouse and you'll have an entirely different view of the world from the penthouse. But if we're still down on the root chakra, we need to make sure that we've got the bread on the counter. We're good. We understand we're safe. Okay. Because then we're going to bring in the curiosity. We're going to start tapping into the play circuit, which is in our solar chakra, our sacral chakra, which has the sexual circuit, which is nothing more than the emergence of life coming. This is what you're birthing. So you're starting with the seeking, which is so beautiful because you're coming in at your root. So let's go back to the seeking circuit. Let's go ahead and just tap into releasing the contract. There needs a physical vibrational voice tone 
from you to release the contract. So whatever comes to mind. So as we go in, we're going to choose to revoke as, it. Yep. I'm so sorry. There is a sense that there's a rage and anger. Okay. That is blocking. I don't feel the rage, but I sense like it's. I don't know how to, I don't have the words. I don't feel enraged right now, but I feel this anger or rage and like sensation here. Okay, cool. So let's just be with that. And let's just bring into what the guides are bringing through is everything is motion and everything is energy. Okay. So you feel the cloak of rage coming in. Does it feel like yours? Yes or no? Like it, it wasn't like... It wasn't what I was feeling in this present moment, but Thank as we're God. doing this work, yeah, I was there. Or is yeah. it mine? Is it mine? Is it mine? I'm getting a no. Are you getting a no? Yeah, it's not. Okay. Yeah. I want you to just be present with the rage. Notice what happens when you're just present with the rage because all of energy moves at all times. Allow it to move through you, allow it to move into the room, allow it to move out of the room. Just be present with it for a moment. Just see what it does. Being stubborn, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's something like, I'm sorry, I'm just seeing it. I, I, I crazy. No, nope. <laughs> had this. I love that. It was a cloak. It wasn't mine. Yeah, and it was angry. But then I saw it removed from me as a tantrum. Not. Oh mercy! Oh, I'm sorry. That was funny. Okay. <laughs> See how beautiful it is when you can just be present with rage. It's not yours. Now, this may be, and what I'm getting threaded through from the realm, okay, is there may be some vestiges there of the old inner child, okay? So I want us to just bring your hands to your heart for a moment. That energy of the rage is not yours, but there's a familiar feeling of this rage of just wanting so deeply what you want, but having an external world have to dangle the carrot in front of you. How does that feel in your body? Okay, that's not true. So just allow that inner child. Can you just love on her and tell her we are turning into the mystical child and it's okay. So allow her to tuck into your heart and just tuck her into bed. And when she's tucked in, just let me know. Good. Beautiful. Yeah, so if that comes back, just acknowledge it. You can just say, I send you out with love. There's no rage here. Now let's tap into this beautiful contract. Okay. So repeating after me, I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. To you. To you. This world mm -hmm. and me. I solemnly swear to this world that I will. That I will. What? Live my life. Show up within. Let's start with the block. It's I'm contributing. There's something about me showing up to this. Why can I not have words? Me. Go back to the case. That is beyond this realm. Back to the, nope. You're the block. Your, Go back to the block. You're in your head. You're in your head. Go back to the cage. What does someone okay. do when they put themselves in the cage? It's a punishment. They're, it's a punishment. They're limited. Blocked. Can't. Yeah. So I solemnly swear to you, world. That, that I, will, I solemnly swear to you, world. That I will put myself in a cage. That I will put myself in a cage. Until. Until. I prove my worth. I prove my worth. No matter the cost to myself. No matter the cost to myself. How does that feel? Spot on. In order to. That's a part. It's self-imposed. It's like a punishment. Feel into it. Go vertical. How are you self-protecting? Do not experience more of the pain. Putting myself in a cage because experiencing people around me is just too much so i can't handle my own can i share what your guides are sharing please 
in order to close access to my close, divinity to close access to my divinity in fear of being vulnerable on my journey no matter the cost to myself no matter the cost to myself you're blocking yourself you're putting yourself in a cage and you're not even allowing the journey to start which is full of exploration it's full of journeys it's full of learnings it's full of what this life is about and that journey is one of to be in co-creation with the divine. So by doing so, you are shutting your soul off from your divinity in the fear of being vulnerable with yourself and the world to just allow that love to come in because this is the, the dissolving of the, the block of the disorientation that was this soul that is now was seeking in her root, but she couldn't feel grounded. She couldn't feel foundations in her soul because the trigger and the emotion was making her feel like she had to attribute to the world's definition of purpose which is a power over and power under structure. So we lose ourselves, but at the same time, your ancestors came in, you felt it in your soul. There were, yes, dissolving the pain, the pain in the root shut down, yes. but we're dissolving that because what's so beautiful is, I'm writing this down in your blueprint. Now that's judgment. Remember, that is ill will judgment. That is an unconscious system of power, the structures that have been running the world for millennia. Fuck mm -hmm. that. Fuck that. Mean you are power with, and now you're taking your power within. And what showed up tonight was the emotional connection to cultivation, self compassion, and nurturing the relationship with the divine because you are stepping into the mystical child. The mystical child needs to be there to become and to nourish the mystical adult. Doesn't yeah. mean you're childish. It means the seeking then turns into the play circuit. Yes. And the seek that makes sense. Seek now we play, and to play is to be vulnerable. To play is to paint outside the lines. To play is to experience. To play is to find out deeper parts of you. Yes. It is mystical. And mystical is being in the grace of prayer with the divine. And when we're in prayer with the divine, because we are in our mystical grace of experiencing our purpose, of washing mm -hmm. the dishes, of volunteering, of apologizing to our child because we went off on them, that's an opportunity of grace. And the opportunity of grace is to be in prayer with the mystical adult and with the divine. So we've moved off the vertical of the feedback loop. So the intuitive clarity was the block of giving homage to the world. Yeah. Now we're seeding down and into our power. We're rooted into our intuitive clarity, back into the mystical child, which is connecting now back and feeding the mystical adult to living and seeking her purpose every day because it is a prayer with divinity. Oh my goodness, yes. Yes. So go back into your root chakra. The root chakra was underactive. And just see if your heart can send love back down into the root chakra. So often we want to ascend but shadow and archetype work is the most powerful work you'll do. And we descend. And we make sure that our primal three chakras are firm and strong. You recruited. Okay. You recruited a little bit of the people pleaser. And you recruited a little bit of the perfectionist. Yeah. 
Okay. So yeah. that was the recruitment of the archetype. But the true archetype of what we're naming today, that the perfectionist and people pleaser were shadowing, was not your archetype. Do you remember what your archetype was? Right now, the with the mystic, what you told me, yes. The mystical child. She's what a to being to put in a cage, no. Yeah. I just, I see, I can visualize it, like, just flying almost. Like, there is, there can't, it's expansive, it's beyond this world and the limitations and, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll say a prayer. Thank you. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so here's our blueprint. So down here is starting at the basics. We're wanting the intuitive clarity to come through. Our intuitive guidance system as a intuitive, which you are, what our goal is, is to clean up the filters that are here on the bottom so that we can have the full divinity coming through. So that's what we just did. The root okay. chakra. The root chakra was underactive. The recruited archetype to protect you was the perfectionist and people pleaser. But the light archetype that was identified right away of what this was really about tonight was the mystical child. The trigger emotion was feeling disorientated, which makes sense with the root. And then the soul's inner mystical child also with your ancestors came true. They're going to hold that space with you. Because they are on this journey with you. And the wisdom that they're bringing through is for your leadership, right? So the wisdom coming down into the vertical is also with the wisdom of your ancestors. We do not speak the voice of our own truth. We speak the truth of the voice of many waters, okay? So the pain then was this frustration, this anxiousness. We clipped the anger and the rage that came in of that little child that was trying to fight its way to keep whatever is there. And we just allowed the presence to be there. We just said, goodbye. So th that shut down then turned into the unconscious conscious release that we released to the world, okay? The power over power under structure, giving away our power and saying, we don't have any power, bullshit. You unconsciously put yourself in that cage. It's not your fault. No matter the cost to yourself in order to close access out of fear to be vulnerable in this world that only has certain ways that you can be a purpose. And money is one of them, which was the script that you came in with. I want to regain financial independence and contribute to the world beyond at home. How does that feel in your body? Feels like that a hearing. It's awful. Like disgusting. Yeah, yeah. All right, my guides are telling me that card. Okay, your etheric mm -hmm. card. That's going to be your etheric tarot card for the week, and you're going to sleep okay. with that underneath your pillow when you go to bed tonight. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop my share, coming into your heart, attaching to your beautiful lower primal chakras, feeling grounded, just feeling the presence of your ancestors, feeling the presence of the divinity, feeling the presence of this mystical child being born tonight. She is showing up for you because you're honoring your purpose. She's the one that honors her purpose, is the one purpose honors. So as we focus in, I want you to repeat after me. I release this vow. Release this vow. Step fully. Step fully. Into the realm of the mystical child. Into the realm of the mystical child. And as we enter this realm of beyond time and space, we thank spirit. And as we enter this realm of time and space, we thank spirit. And our loved ones. And our loved ones for supporting. I align my heart. I align my heart and mind. New clarity. 
a new clarity, play, play, wisdom, and deep love. Wonderful. So as I close this out, eternal source, spirit, ancestors, thank you so much for bringing us and showing us our place of balance, for filling our hearts with sacred power, for hearing Stephanie as she became one with her soul's purpose tonight, releasing the old cage, realizing her mystical self, and integrating her new truth. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Beautiful. Thank you, beloved. Thank Thank you, Cass. Thank you. But what are your key takeaways? That I am a divine spirit, and if I keep, like, I was trying to focus on fitting into the world, but I'm never going to fit into the world because of my divine spirit. And I, this is the card. I love that card so much. But it wasn't immediate. I saw the cage, but I thought someone was holding the cage. But look at what the aim. Oh, wow. And then I was doing the Carolyn Mice thing. I don't know why I had bought yeah. this. So long ago. And the mystic card had come out for me a while back. And I'm just like, that's not me. I'm not. It's just a reminder that continue to enjoy where I'm at, continue to have fun and play, learning about these things. It's not on the material plane. This isn't about the material plane. Though there is a connection, but it's not it. And I'm not going to fit this world because it is beyond. So It's vertical, not horizontal. Yes. And the nine of pentacles, she is holding the beautiful bird on her hand. And all of the coins and plenty is at her feet. And the bird is at her demand, but it is also her partner in spirit. The songbird (laughs) is singing to you, and your voice is the songbird singing back into your purpose. Oh, my goodness, Cass. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing in your blessing. This is... Again, I feel so much lighter, but I feel very clear today. Last yeah. time I felt like you, I shed a hundred pounds. Right. Today, it's this peaceful knowing. You brought it to Thank yourself you. and as did your ancestors and your soul. So good work tonight, my friends. You're going to thank sleep you for being well. the guide and facilitator. Thank, Thank you so much. You're All right, love, get some sleep. Remember to put those cards underneath your pillow.